YouTube team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. But for the patrons, you know you can send it directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, we got so many great questions to get into. Let's do it. First question came from the Marksman. He said, what's up, Engraven? Just want to say love your videos. I love you. I appreciate it, though. Uh, he said, my question is, what are your thoughts on Hayden Hurst potentially joining the Ravens again in 2022? His contract is expiring, and he's expressed interest in joining the Ravens. Again, love you and everything you do. I appreciate that, Marksman. And with Hayden Hurst, I did see something that he uh, he liked on Instagram about him going back to the Ravens. This this was a couple weeks ago. Um, now it, it's crazy because I've, I've been I've been talking about this like Hayden Hurst without talking about Hayden Hurst because I've been saying I, I want the Ravens to bring in a tight end who is similar to Mark Andrews that can stretch the field. He doesn't have to be Mark Andrews, but similar to Mark Andrews uh, to where he can stretch the field. He can make some plays down the field for the Ravens at tight end. Um, and he, we can just have another guy, uh, another significant threat at tight end for the Ravens because it would just make so much sense. Like, and, and I want, since Greg Roman is going to be here, let's give him everything that he can possibly have to succeed. Let's set him up nicely so nobody has any excuses. So with, with Hayden Hurst, he has just been a tight end that has just been slipping my mind. But that is everything that we would love to have in a tight end, uh, at tight end two or tight end two A, two B, whatever. Because, you know, Mark Andrews is tight end one, but whoever's after him would be two A, two B, whatever. But having Hayden Hurst back, I think it would be great. Now, this, it would take a lot and not even talking money, but a lot of pride would have to be set aside. Because Hayden Hurst wanted out because of his diminished role. But if he was on his way in and he knew he was having a diminished role, that could put him in a different mindset. Hey, who knows? I couldn't be mad at him if he didn't want to come back to the Ravens. I couldn't be mad at him at all because, again, that's what he was trying to get out of because he was tight end one, but then he got hurt and Mark Andrews stepped in and showed out and the rest was history. Um, but I, I loved that. It, we had such a great duo, even trio with Boyle, too. You had these two tight ends that could move downfield, that could run. They, they could go. And then you had Nick Boyle. He was the blocker. He had some good hands too, though. But he was more so the blocking tight end. Um, but they, we had such a nice trio. And I would not be mad if they got that trio back. You kind of feel for Hayden Hurst because he left the Ravens to go be a starter somewhere. Okay, they traded him to Atlanta. Then Atlanta goes and drafts Kyle Pitts. And it's like, hey, man, like, what about me? Well, like, don't nobody want me. Uh, but yes, Hayden Hurst, we want you. So come on back home. Next question came from my boy Harry. And appreciate you being a patron, Harry. He said, how you doing? And the rest of the team, keep it clean family. Oh, we're doing really good. He said, I hope everything is going well for everyone. I have a question, more of an idea of what the Ravens should do in the draft and free agency to give us the best chance of winning the Super Bowl next season. All right, let's see. Uh, if I was EDC, the first thing I would do is cut Villanueva. Oof, yikes. You're getting straight to it. I don't think anybody's really going to disagree with you there. Um, he said, I think he was still playing for the Steelers last year. He was just in a Ravens uniform. I think Miles Boykin, Tavon Young, Justice Hill, and Ben Powers are also cut. Man, I, I guess I missed something with Ben Powers because I really thought he, uh, I thought he was going to be a free agent this year. But anyway, moving on. He said, I think Anthony Averett leaves in free agency. I agree. Uh, I was hoping that Bozeman and Elliott would be back, but I don't think we can afford Bozeman. And with us signing Tony Jefferson, I don't see us bringing back Elliott. That's a good way to put it um, because... We have all these box safeties on a team. Um, Chuck Clark, now Tony Jefferson, too. Deshaun Elliott was one, but he's getting ready to be a free agent. Geno Stone, he's getting ready to be a free agent. He's not a box safety, though. He's a free safety. Um, and then we got Brandon Stevens. He's still transitioning to safety. Um, so he's like a corner safety. But, yeah. Anyway, um, I also think Brandon Williams and Pernell McPhee are out of here. I, I agree. I forget that Pernell McPhee's a pending free agent, too. But, yeah, I think that they're, they're done bringing him back. With all that said, we have a lot of holes that we need to fill in the draft in free agency. They certainly do. Uh, I think in free agency, we should look at stars. We, oh, no, he said we shouldn't look at stars, but what the team actually needs. So why can't we get stars for what the team needs? But anyway, he said, for example, it would be nice if we got Devontae Adams, but it would be really nice. But yeah. anyway, he said uh, we can't afford him. And why would he want to play in g Rose offense? Yeah, uh, yeah, Devontae Adams would be great. But 
he you know one he cannot make the most money that's first and foremost he cannot get the most money with the ravens it's not happening and then it would not be the best place for his career uh and then he said we need someone who miles boykin was supposed to be ah that is the the best way to put it right there man Somebody who Miles Boykin was supposed to be. A shorthanded big body receiver that can block. I present Auden Tate from the Bengals. 6'5, 225, with great hands that can block. I really like Auden Tate. I remember when uh, we played the Bengals like a couple years ago. And Auden Tate, they, they just kept going to Auden Tate. I forgot who the quarterback was, but he kept going to Auden Tate all over and over and over. I'm like, man, this dude is nice, man. Um, but. He said he wouldn't cost much and looking for a chance to prove himself since he keeps getting pushed down the Bengals receiver depth chart. He's also young and wouldn't stop the development of our other wide receivers on the team. What development? What, what, who, who's, who's been getting developed? What other wide receivers? What? I mean, there, there's been improvement. There's certainly been improvement, but who's like, like I, I just, that's one thing that uh, still is a concern of mine. Um, and again, you can only do so much because you know it's going to be Hollywood, it's going to be Rashad Bateman, it's going to be Mark Andrews, those are going to be your top pass catchers. Um, but after that, it's like, who's next? And with, with the I don't think Bengals would trade him to the Ravens, uh, unless Ravens would have to give up something significant for I think for the Bengals to even consider it. Uh, I'm sure he would love to get an opportunity somewhere else, um, but I just don't see it being with the Ravens. That'd be nice. I won't be mad, but I just don't see it going down uh, with the Ravens. Uh, he said, it's always good when you can get a good player from your rivals. If not, maybe uh, DJ Shark from Jacksonville or Josh Reynolds from Detroit. I'm pretty sure they went out of their situations. Another move I would love would be Trent Brown from the Patriots to be our right tackle. Ooh, some quality right there. That's what I'm talking about. He said he's in his prime. He's huge, 6'8", 360. And most of all, he's a good player. That's the biggest thing right there. Can't get too caught up in measurables. Somebody's a good player. They are a good player. If they make your football team better, they make your football team better. So that's the most. That's, that's my favorite part of what you said. Uh, he said, if you want to... <laughs> He said, if you want to be cheap and not pay him, we could pay Morgan Moses from the Jets, who's a little bit older, but is also a good player that would be cheaper. That way, if Stanley isn't healthy, again, whoever we draft can play left tackle, and if he is healthy, can learn and not be forced into the lineup. Those are my thoughts. This was some pretty good analysis, as usual. You, you always be bringing it regardless. He said, sometimes you don't need the star player, but just a good player that knows how to do their job and fulfill a role that's missing. I'd be interested in everyone's thoughts. Yeah, you, you can't get a star player at, at every single position. That's just impossible. Well, except if you're the Rams. But no, you can't get a star player everywhere. But um, again, same thing I've been saying this offseason, quality over quantity. Let's, just, let's not just get bodies there, but let's get somebody who can make a positive impact on this team. Next question came from my boy Martin, and appreciate you being a patron, Martin. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and team. Keep it clean. My question is, do you think EDC should put on notice if we still have little production from our draft classes? Because this will be his fourth year as GM, and so far, a lot of his draft picks have not worked out. Um, they stress the, important of nailing, the importance of nailing draft picks while Lamar is on his rookie deal. And so far, a lot of those picks just haven't worked out. He also talked about how having multiple picks gives you more chances to hit on a star. But that's also more chances to hit on another miss. If he wants a star, why not trade our 30 picks for a proven one? That, that is such a, a good way to put it because I never think about it like that. So, yeah, because he does say that. The more chances you have, the more chances you have to hit it and make it. Get somebody good. But that also does give you more chances to miss as well. Uh, he said, the further away we get from Ozzy's players, the worse the team gets. Also, um, he is going to blame the coaching staff for these picks not working out. That's on him, too, because he's a GM. Yes, I know Harbaugh said he was in charge of the coaching hires, but EDC is the GM and could step in at any point and make a change, even at head coach, if need be. EDC needs to be held more accountable for the Ravens' lack of success. Out of all the guys he drafts, how many of them look like stars, except maybe uh, Marquise Brown? EDC needs to nail this draft more than ever or be put on notice. Well, um, I don't think he'll be put on notice. He does need to be accountable, though. And that's something that we talked about uh, shortly after the offseason 
I mean, shortly after the season this year and, and heading into this offseason, we talked about the Ravens need to be more accountable. We talked about how EDC, Harbaugh, Greg Roman, Wink at the time, because this was before he got uh, pushed out, and Lamar Jackson. We talked about how all of them, and there's more too, but we talked about how all of those guys specifically need to be held more accountable. They need to be accountable for their actions. And with EDC, that's the exact same thing we talked about with the draft. The draft he has, because early picks, thumbs up, great job. But after the early picks, it's like, oof, it, it gets rough. And, and this has been such a lack of impact, like you said. He's not going to be put on notice. He ain't going nowhere. Ain't like they, they ain't like, like Bashadi going to be like, all right, EDC, you're out of here. No. And, but as far as the drafts, it's, it's been rough. It, it, it has been rough. <laughs> so, I mean, looking at his drafts, 2019. Drafted Hollywood in the first round. All right, cool. Jalen Ferguson, really no impact. Miles Boykin, little impact. Justice Hill, Ben Powers, Eamon Marshall, Daylon Mack, Trace McSorley. We didn't get much of anything out of that draft except Hollywood. 2020, Patrick Queen, okay. J.K. Dobbins, okay. Matt Abike, Duvernay, then Malik Harrison, Tyree Phillips, Ben Bredesen. Braddock Washington, Nat, James Prochet, Geno Stone, the impact just it hasn't been there. With the late picks. The first, the first couple picks, Patrick Queen, J.K. Dobbins, Matt, Matt Abike even. Uh, Devin Duvernay. Yeah. And then this year, Rashad Bateman, okay. Dafay Away, okay. Ben Cleveland, yeah, he came along later on. Brandon Stevens, okay. That this is a project that's seen to be headed in the right direction. Tylen Wallace, mm, Sean Wade, Dalen Hayes, Ben Mason. So, yeah, there's been a big lack of impact when it's come to his draft pick. So, again, he, he does need to be uh, accountable and got to step it up. Got to step it up. And, and it takes not just two. I was about to say it takes two, but it takes more than two because it takes him drafting the right players. It also takes the coaching staff using those players the right way. So he can do everything right on his part. But if the coaching staff, they, they slip up, then it's like, oh, OK, I can't do nothing. So it, it takes everybody in this thing together uh, to really get it right. Uh, and he also said the Ravens need to really work out something with Bozeman. Tag them or something. Do they really want to go back to 2020? Mm. We're going to see. We're going to see. I, I think Bozeman is gone, though. I, I think he's out of there. Uh, we won't know till we know because time's a ticking. Uh, we got about, wow, we got like two weeks before free agency. Wow, we right there. Wow. Um, but, yeah, I think he's gone. I think we all going to get that notification at the very beginning of free agency. Bradley Bozeman has agreed to the deal with the next question came from my boy Javo. He said, what does play like a Raven mean to you in your own words? Um, just grinding, being overlooked, um, but really shocking a lot of people, uh, really putting in that work um, and just, yeah, really just uh, being underrated, uh, being underrated by a lot of outside people. But you show that, hey, y'all, y'all messed up big time on passing on me. Next question came from my guy D3. He said, what's good, engraving the team? Keep it clean. I hope all is well with the family and Pookie. Hey, shout out to Pookie. Uh, he said, I have, a, I have a question for you. Since many former Ravens are being linked to possibly returning, like Hayden Hurst or Darius Smith, do you think we could bring back Nigel Warrior to help shore up the safety spot? Or maybe even Sean Wade from the Patriots. They are still young and have high ceiling as players. Uh, what are your thoughts? Thanks for the content. And from a family to yours, peace and blessings. Appreciate that. Um... As far as uh, Sean Wade, no, I don't think that happens because the Ravens, like, I, I don't think they would draft Sean Wade, then trade him to the Patriots just to trade back for him from the Patriots. I think what they would do in that case would just be to draft another guy, draft another cornerback. Uh, as far as Nigel Warrior, uh, cause I, he went to the Seahawks. I think he got hurt. I forgot what happened with him in the Seahawks, but Nigel Warrior... I think it's the same thing. I don't know what the status of his contract is since he was an undrafted rookie free agent that they got. Um, I, I'm not sure what, what's going on with him, but I, I don't think that they would do that either. I don't think that they would bring him back. Um, I think, again, I think they would draft a safety uh, or go the route of another undrafted rookie free agent because their safety, because we, we, I forget a lot of times when we talk about safety, I forget about Ardarius Washington. Even though a lot of people think that he could end up playing that slot role, so we'll see. But they got Ardarius Washington. Um, they got Brandon Stevens. Uh, and, yeah, 
that's it right now as far as free safeties, roaming safeties. But And they could, of course, draft somebody too. Uh, but yeah, I don't think either one of those two guys will be back. Next question came from my boy Droid209. He said, my man, Uncle Graven, free agency is right around the corner. I want to see which four you would pick up. Uh, he had of Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin, Chandler Jones, J.C. Jackson, Marcus Williams, Orlando Brown, Jadavian Clowney, Honey Badger. Um, out of those guys, ooh, I would go Jadavian Clowney, um, J.C. Jackson, uh, Honey Badger, and Orlando Brown Jr. Yeah. And he said another question. How would you how would you describe Joe Flacco's time as a Raven and how did he make an impact with the Baltimore Ravens? Thanks again, my guy, and keep it real. Appreciate you. Joe Flacco, uh, he gave the Ravens consistency at the quarterback position. You knew what you were gonna get out of Joe Flacco. There were so many times and so many seasons where Ravens just did not know who was going to be their QB1 uh, come week one. But once they drafted Joe Flacco and after Troy Smith got his uh, tonsillitis, then Joe Flacco ended up being a QB1 in for, what, 11 years? How long was he with the Ravens? Well, however long it was, from 2008 to, yeah, 2018. Okay. So, yeah, 10 years then. So, you knew who your starter was going to be. You knew it. Um, so he gave them that consistency. Was he the best? No. Was he provided the best? No. He was not consistently um, surrounded with weapons. He was not consistently uh, built around. And, and that's a lot of our fear that that could, same thing could happen with Lamar Jackson, too, because uh, of Ravens history. But, hey, we'll see how it goes. But, yeah, Flacco, um, yeah, he, he gave them their first, like, real franchise quarterback. Uh, and and that, was, that was a great thing, man. So shout out to Flag. I remember that first touchdown. I remember I was watching the game at uh, my boy's house. And that first touchdown where Flacco, uh, he faked it to, who was the running back? Was it Willis McGay? He, I forgot who he faked it to. But it was a play action. And then he ended up running. He ended up taking off. And he ended up making a couple Bengals miss and scored a touchdown. His first, that was his first touchdown of his career. Uh, and it came on the ground. They ain't never called Flacco a running back. Anyway, uh, he also said, uh, I took a little break from any Ravens news just to focus on the draft. Uh, doing research and, and on the top prospects, but I keep on looking into Sauce. That man is the true definition of play like a Raven. Is it a wrong move to draft a corner or go for an offensive line? If we draft Sauce, do you think Marlo could switch to a safety? No. No Marlon Humphrey or Marcus Peters to safety. No. None of that. Uh, but he said, thanks for the time and keep it clean. Appreciate it. Um, but Sauce, I wouldn't be mad at that. Um... I wonder when we're going to get some update on the Marcus Peters contract situation. Because I, I know they ain't about to leave Marcus Peters' contract as is. they either going to give an extension or hopefully not the other thing. But um, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, as far as Sauce, I wouldn't be mad at that. And I, if if he was like that, like that, since they say he ain't allowed a touchdown in college, I'm like, what? He ain't allowed a touchdown? Oh, well, if he ain't allowed no touchdown as a cornerback, then he might not fit in so well with the Ravens. Uh, <laughs> That would be good though So that he would bring that confidence Bring that swagger uh, and, and if he was like that Like that from jump Then you could kick Marlo into the slot If Tay Tay depending on what happens Like ooh, it's a lot of questions As far yes we know the Ravens do need offensive line though They certainly do um, But it all depends on how things fall It all depends on how the draft falls How different players and, and prospects and whatnot fall so I wouldn't be mad at Sauce. It also depends on who's available at that time, too. And the last question on this episode came from my boy, Phil. He said, I ain't graving first time giving my thoughts. I hope you and the family are having a blessed day. Appreciate it, Phil. Uh, I'm looking at this Ravens roster, and I think we have to sign Tyron Matthew. I believe he will be similar to Peters with the mindset and physicality fitting right in with the Ravens. Definitely that mindset and that tra trash talking. He going to run his mouth, but he is one of the players that can back it up. So I wouldn't be mad at that. Continuing, he said, I think this also allows for a good rotation at safety and Stevens could get himself back in that cornerback role and possibly allow Peters to get back comfortably. I like that thinking. I, I love that thinking. Um, and yeah, if Peters could go back to his natural, well, his natural position, because he used to be a running back, but if he can go to his natural position at corner and yeah, he could play some safety too. He could do some different things and whatnot. But yeah, that'd be something. And that would give Ravens another cornerback because we know. With the corners, it can get a little rough there. Well, it got certainly rough there because they lost every corner last year at some point. So I like that thinking. Watkins, Averett, B-Dub, uh, Ricard, Bozeman can walk while we trade away Boykin and Wolf. We go young at the D-line. 
uh, trade for Ridley. And, oh, he said trade, trade for Calvin Ridley. Okay. Uh, draft Charles Cross to play either left or right tackle side until Stanley can come back. We have to get Tylen Wallace for these three years and see what he's about. Mm, I, I wouldn't count on it because he wasn't a first-round pick for the Ravens. So as a wide receiver, ooh, it's, it's, it's rough. Uh, and he said with Mandrews, Ridley, Bateman, Hollywood, DuVernay, Prochet, and Wallace, it gives Giro no excuses. I would love that. I would love that. I would love that lineup. Um, that would really give us a little squad, man. A little squad, a young squad too, with a lot of uh, a lot to look forward to every Sunday. Um, but then I, I, I feel like the the biggest enemy could possibly, like the biggest enemy was this year, was health. If they can stay healthy. Oh yeah, they they could make some noise again. Shout out to Graven.